following is a Bible study in a series entitled Growing in Grace and Knowledge, put together by the pastors at Living Savior Lutheran Church in Asheville and Hendersonville, North Carolina. This Bible study grows our understanding of the Christian life so that we would grow in our Christian life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final installment of this Growing in Grace online Bible study. As you are well acquainted by now, every Monday we provide this video preview. It's an on-ramp for your own personal study as we kind of encourage you to take a look at the five goals under a specific heading. Each of them point to a different Bible passage and then you're able to take your notes and then highlight some things and even write down your own questions so that in the later Zoom sessions, both on Wednesday morning and Thursday evening, you can share those and then we can talk about them together um, as fellow believers. So what a privilege it's been. It's hard to believe it's already seven weeks, and that brings us to the last topic today, which is the world. Now, uh, every single week you have known that there is no way we are going to be able to cover everything in this preview. Um, it'd be like a 40-minute uh, us talking to the screen, Pastor Zell and I, which we'll, we will gladly spare you. Um, or it would be a two-hour discussion online, this week is no exception, um, because as we're talking about the world and what God's Word has to say to it, it brings up and even pushes on some some topics and some some hot button issues that um, that raise a lot of questions for believers, and that's okay. Because the one thing that we always need to remember is that it's good to ask our questions as we trust in God's Word, but also then to listen uh, very carefully to the answers that that God gives. So, with no further ado. We can start off the first goal with, that you're going to see as we as we talk about the world is to understand why the world is the way that it is and where would we go, what better place to start than Genesis chapter three where we see the the fall into sin. Now it's easy to kind of ask certain questions about God, um, and and this is very common. And I'm just going to kind of head this off at the pass. It's very common for people when we start to think about why the world is broke, why there is sin, why there is death, how that came to be. For us ultimately to, to maybe start our questioning and our reasoning by putting God in the dock. That is, we are going to interrogate him with a lot of questions. Much preferable and much more beneficial, however, would be for us to ask questions based on what the Bible tells us alone. Because then it leads us to actually a, a better and more truthful understanding of why the world is the way that it is. So sometimes people be like, well, why did God even let the devil come down? A better question is, why did Adam and Eve even listen when they had everything? You see, that that kind of leads us back to the, what the text in Genesis 3 says, and even what, what precedes it, Genesis 1 and 2. God had given them everything um, that they could ever need and more, just this wonderful heavenly existence in the Garden of Eden. That, that leads us to kind of understand why the world is the way that it is. Believing the lie that there's some type of existence outside of what God has, has created and believing the lie that God is holding out on us or maybe even lying to us, uh, that, that perpetuates, unfortunately, and its ramifications do also. So why is the world the way that it is? Ultimately, because, because sin entered the world and death came through sin. Paul, Paul says that in Romans as he's hearkening back to the truths that we learn from from Genesis chapter 3. So, so as you're going through that goal, you, you get to explore, first of all, the lies that the devil was telling them. It's very, very pertinent still today to, to get to the bottom of those. And then even all this, also to see the ramifications of, of how that affected Adam and Eve, and it still perpetuates still today. Um, one of the things that this leads us to also do is to then talk about how the things that we see in the beginning, which are easily dismissed by, by critics of Scripture, um, actually lead us to some truth claims that critics can't overcome. In other words, when we start to, to look at things a, a, about God and His nature and the fact that there is a moral understanding of right and wrong, this does give us a lot to discuss as believers, but also a lot of truth that we can hang our hat on as believers, confessing our faith in an, an increasingly unbelieving world and society. The the second goal you see is to to see what sin has to see that that sin has ruined creation and in so doing um, God is aimed at rescuing creation then. So when you 
open up to Romans chapter 8, it's impossible to get around this overarching height and depth and, and width of the wisdom and knowledge and saving love of God. And in Romans 8, one of the things you get to get to look at is, especially when it comes to the world, God does have a plan for it. And this is a, a place that God has given us, and we are to be wise managers of it. That still exists from the very beginning when God commissioned Adam to, to take care of, of his creation. And we are managers of it. And there's no such thing as a limitless resource, right? But should we become so connected to this spinning rock that we think that this is the end-all be-all and treat it as though it is our eternal destiny, our eternal home? Of course not. Um, and there's more that you get to, to dig into in that lesson on, on Romans chapter 8. So, uh, what a perfect time also to talk about God's control. That although that there we can look at calamity and natural disasters and we can easily think that, that everything is spinning out of control, actually God is quite in control. And he uses what seems to be the, the things that are outside of our understanding and control to actually accomplish his, his good purpose, although we don't understand it. Look no farther than when Jesus is in the boat with his disciples. I, I especially love the detail when, when he's sleeping in the boat. Uh, and that shows just how in control he is. And, and then when he opens up his mouth and he quiets the wind and the waves, um, my, one of my favorite quotes is that the, the wind and the waves heard the voice of their maker and they had only one option but to listen and be still. Uh, just a beautiful way of describing what's really going on in all of creation, not just when Jesus was walking physically during his time on earth, but also still today. And then we get to some more specific items about how God governs and, and serves as, as a, in, in control by creating controlling agents in this world. Romans chapter 13. If you open up to Romans 13, the first thing you got to keep in mind is that Paul is writing this along with all of his epistles while he is experiencing, along with the rest of the Christian world, persecution. Persecution the likes of which none of us have seen. Unless some of you have lived in a country where you are maybe going to be imprisoned or killed for your Christian faith, and, and I don't know about it, maybe that's possible. None of us have lived in that world, and yet it is in that precise context that the Apostle Paul says, submit to the governing leaders. There's no authority on earth except that which has been established by God. He encourages us as believers to recognize that God does create the order that is supposed to be carried out by governing officials. Does that mean God is creating the flaws that they might enact? No. Does that mean we have any excuse possible to disobey them or to be very disrespectful to them and we don't like what they do? No. Um, rather, he has created government, the office of the government, for our good, um, to, for justice and order and for the preservation of peace, most of which we have, we have experienced most of that during our very privileged um, existence. Peace, relative to human history and relative to, to many other places around the world, we are, we are very spoiled and blessed by God in that way and, and shouldn't overlook that. But as you read through Romans chapter 13, um, this might not come as a surprise to you that this last year has been quite a politically tense year, and it seems like every year is more and more that way, but an election year especially. And so as there can seem to be an increasing divergence and a polarity between sides and maybe even multiple sides, it's really important to remember whose side we are really on and also then the role of the government and how we are to view them as certainly a blessing, but never our savior. Certainly um, something that God has created for order and stability, and there's a ton of responsibility, but make no mistake, they are also not in ultimate control, but under the ultimate control of our sovereign God and savior. That's uh, Romans 13, really important to read. Maybe, maybe a couple times a year. Maybe also if you're, I'll, I'll even say it, maybe even if you're reading the news and getting a little carried away, just pause, turn off the news, go into a corner, pray, 
remember Paul's persecution, read Romans 13, say the Lord's Prayer, and then go back to your day. It just, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm just saying that wouldn't do you harm. That's all. Is that fair? I think so. Uh, then, then finally, to see what will happen at the end of the world. And this might f fill a lot of people with dread as they, as people might levy questions whether they're new to the Christian faith or critical of the Christian faith, maybe antagonistic against the Christian faith. They might have questions about Christians and government, and maybe because they've seen bad examples of how Christians function when they talk and view the Christian government. They, they might also have questions about the world and our responsibility to it, to it they might say. Um, how we might be stewards of it and what's going to happen at the end and how could a loving God do this and how could a, a just God do that. In the end, though, it's important that we keep this, this ultimate picture in the forefront, where we really belong, what God aims to do. And of all that we don't know, he does give us enough details to find joy and even rejoice in the fact that God will return and take us to be with him forever in heaven. We call it the last day. We call it Judgment Day, and Judgment Day can sound scary, but not for those who belong to our Savior Jesus Christ. For since he was judged on the cross in our place, and we by faith have been declared right in God's sight, then we have absolutely nothing to fear and everything to look forward to. Such an important lesson as the world and how we view the world in these times unprecedented times, how many times have we heard that, um, have, have become such a, a part of the foreground of our, our thinking and living. What a great opportunity for us to look at what God has to say about the world and these times, and every time for that matter. So God bless your study. Uh, if you have any other questions too, you don't have to wait for those Zoom sessions. You can feel free to reach out to Pastor Zell, to Vicar Welch, or, or myself, or all three of us. You could get three answers back. And um, but you don't have to wait for those Zoom sessions. Feel free to call us or email us. We would love to hear from you any way that you're, you're digging into God's word and, and we can assist in that and encourage you further. We, we would be more than happy to do so. We look forward to those two Zoom sessions, though we have one at Wednesday at 10 a.m. and then Thursday at 7 p.m. For those of you who receive the emails, you see the links in there. But if you're listening to this and you want to jump in, just feel free to reach out to us. There's no pretense. This isn't the means by which we are going to hook hook your, your information and bombard your, your inbox further. Um, but we'd love to have you be part of the conversation. You get to hear not just, not just us pastors, but you get to hear uh, fellow Christians um, asking questions and with all sincerity, wrestling in and growing in, in God's word. After all, that's what this class is about, growing in God's grace and in the knowledge of his saving truth. Lord's blessings to you. Look forward to talking with you more this week. Take care.